Hi everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. <laughs> We're here. I have finally finished reading The Starless Sea by Erin Morgerston. I am a little bit nervous to be honest to film this video because I don't want to come across as like a haughty, stooty person who is like rude or I don't know. I don't mean to come across as a disrespectful towards your favorite author or towards your favorite book. Because I read The Starless Sea and I didn't like it. And I have a lot of problems with this book and we are going to talk about them in this video. But just, just to put it out there, just to let you know, I have no academic background in literature. I have no particular education in this sphere. I am just a regular reader, just like you are. All that I say in this video are just my opinions and those things are just purely my personal experience with this book and how I feel about it. I am not trying to take away that special connection that you might, hate, might have with this book. I'm not trying to hate on it. <laughs> I don't like this book, I don't. This review, this video isn't favorable for this book. But it's not hate, it's just purely my experience and I'm just trying to explain how I feel. I'm just trying to explain what is it, what it is exactly that I don't like about this book and how I exactly feel about it. Because I just know that this video is going on the internet and a lot of people on the internet can be very sensitive. So I just wanted to put it out there. I'm not hating, I'm just explaining how I feel and I'm just talking about my own experiences. Take this video as just as that, just personal opinion. Also, I know that like I am not the best educated person in the world. I don't know a lot of things. I am not the most read person in the world. I also understand I might have missed something. I might have misunderstood something in this book. I might have been not attentive enough to see certain answers. So this video is also to start a discussion, to start a conversation. Maybe you will be able to explain something to me. Maybe you will show what you love about this book and we will be able to talk about it and discuss it. So this video is not to bash this book. It's not to hate on it. The purpose of this video is to start a discussion and to talk about it. And maybe some of you will explain certain things to me. Okay, so that is out of the way. <laughs> You can tell I'm a little bit nervous, but I just really want to talk about this book. I know that it's a lot of people's favorite, and I know that it's Erin Morgerston is a lot of people's favorite author. I didn't read her Night Circus. I, I'm not going to, <laughs> to be honest, after reading this book. This is the, like, the premise of this video, and now let's start with the book. And so let's start off with two, only two, <laughs> kind of positive things that I noticed, like, that, that I saw in here, but they're, like, just kind of positive. Just, like, not exactly kind of. <laughs> like, for me, obviously, everything in this video is, like, you know, personal. Writing. Writing is beautiful. Like, I can say nothing against her writing. Like, it's, it is beautiful. Even for me as a foreigner, it was beautiful. Like, the sentences, the language, like, how she put words together, it was beautiful. She has a way with words, like, you can tell she has a good way with words. Yes, that was beautiful, have nothing against that. Second one, the world, not, like, the cave. <laughs> you know, this cave of wonders that uh, she created. Yes, it was interesting. Yes, it was fascinating. I agree with that. Interesting, mesmerizing. Yes. And now why they are kind of positive. <laughs> why I don't really see them as like this redeeming factor for this whole book. In my opinion, writing, the world, those are secondary things. They aren't supposed to be the main part of the story. They aren't supposed to be in the center for me. Like the way I understand it and the way I see it, these two things, they are means. They are means to tell a story, to convey an idea, to convey a thought. Like, they are not a priority for me in the book. If I had to draw, like, like a picture of the priorities for me in a book, 
that would be idea at the top plot and the characters would take the second place and then everything else which is writing world the rest of the things magic whatever the rest it would be at the bottom it's not the center it felt to me like in this book writing and the world those secondary elements they took the main stage the idea the plot the characters they were lost to these two things to the writing and to the world to be honest i'm not even sure if there was a well-formed idea for this book like if there was a well-formed question or thought that the author wanted to convey with this book we will talk about it later i will give you examples also i'm not really sure that the plot was thought through very well and characters as well like characters also there isn't really like particular character development and we will talk about it also later because i didn't find any particular idea because i didn't think that the plot was thought through particularly well because i didn't like the characters the whole book felt to me very pretentious pretentious overly dramatic in Russian we have this word which is Mishura. We call it Mishura. Mishura I don't I don't know the English word for it. So the main the first meaning of this word is like this sparkly stuff that you put on your Christmas tree. In a figurative meaning, when we say Mishura, we mean something beautiful, flashy, but insubstantial, not important, having nothing on the inside. And that's what this book felt to me like it felt to me insubstantial with nothing on the inside it felt to me pretentious like mishura so that's how i feel about this book this is like my overall feeling about it again i'm not trying to, i really i really am not trying to hate on your book i'm just explaining myself and explaining how i feel i hope you i hope you understand it i am totally fine with people loving this book like if you love this book that's great it means you have seen something in it that i haven't maybe you will be willing to share with me in the comments what is it that you found in it but that's how i feel felt now let's start to talk about it in more details Let's start with the idea of the book. I really couldn't understand and I still cannot tell you what is the idea behind this book? What is it that the author wants to tell? What is it that she wants to talk to me about? Uh, also, I forgot to mention there will be spoilers, a lot of spoilers because I cannot talk about this book without mentioning any spoilers. You can see I have tabs. They are only in the second part because I, I usually never tab my books. I never write in my books. In case of this book, I just didn't like so many things and I really wanted to talk about it. And like all of these tabs, those are things that I didn't like. <laughs> Colors don't mean anything. Those are just all the things that I didn't understand, didn't like, didn't accept. So yeah, there is that. Now let's start with the idea. Didn't get the idea of the book. In the beginning, it felt like it would be just a mystery kind of a mystery story about this mysterious book with this with like the story like episode from his life in it and like then finding out about this underground library you know it would be a mystery story but the more you read the more you understand that we aren't really going anywhere like this place yes he finds it but he doesn't really find an acceptable explanation for it, like a full explanation for this place, where it come from, how did it appear, why is it there, why is it a library for God's sake? So I have so many questions, I just, <laughs> I, yeah, we will talk later about all the questions. First I thought it would be a mystery. Later I read on and I come across this, his conversation, it's already in the second part, I will just read it for you. I come across his conversation with this, uh, with Mirabel, when he is already, you know, underground, looking for Dorian for the second time. He comes across this, like, ice 
statue of Mirabel and he's and she's like tell me a story and he's like okay and he tells her a story about himself page in this edition if you want to check for yourself page 424 on the very bottom so he starts telling her a story he tells her about moving for, from place to place to place and never feeling like he ever belonged in any of them how wherever he was he would almost always rather be someplace else, preferably somewhere fictional. He tells her how he worries that none of it meant anything, that none of it is important, that who he is or who he thinks he is is just a collection of references to other people's art and he is so focused on story and meaning and structure that he wants his world to have all of it neatly laid out and it never ever does and he fears it never will so after reading this paragraph i was like is this supposed to be a story of finding your place in the world is this supposed to be a story of finding yourself and story of self-discovery but then like the more you read what does zachary find Zachary finds a boyfriend and like that's it he finds a boyfriend and a cave and so and then what is the like the idea then if you want to find yourself you have to find person <laughs> you have to find a person to love a boyfriend or like you know love of your life why another person is supposed to define who you are why being next to somebody else is your place in the world like are you a puppy are you a puppy to for your place to be next to somebody this is i don't know it feels to me so wrong <laughs> like i just i i'm so lost i so don't understand like if it's that i so disagree with that like with this idea i am i so strongly disagree with this idea and if it's not then i just don't understand that might be the next idea of the book, finding your place in the world and like tr trying to find yourself. But then we read on. We read on and we come across Kat's secret diary. In this secret diary, which by the way felt to me like it was there just for just to give an explanation, to give an explanation for this book, like what this book was supposed to be. Because in many places, like it mentions like the story and it feels very relevant to this book. So it felt like an explanation of the author's intent. And like, why would you write an explanation for your book instead of just improving the story itself? So the story would tell what you want to tell. Like, I also, like, I, I really don't understand. But okay, so what it says in Kat's diary. So she is remembering talking to somebody about, like, the story that she heard that is, like, related to this cave and to this library, to, like, Zachary's story. And she's like, I remember wondering if this story was an analogy about people who stay in places or relationships or whatever situations longer than they should because they're afraid of letting go or moving on or the unknown or how people hold on to things because they miss what the thing was even if that isn't what that the same thing is now so after reading this i start wondering is this book about learning to let go of things if this book about learning to move on <laughs> but again <laughs> When you look at, at like, Zachary, what does Zachary learn to let go of? Nothing. What does Zachary learn to move on from? Nothing. Everything that he has done, it was never his decision. He was always pushed by, by somebody. So you cannot really say that he has learned to let go on, or he has learned to move on. Also, like, from what did, exactly did he move on? Like... I am so confused with this book. I'm so sorry if like this video is all, over, is all over the place. I'm trying to structure it, but just my thoughts are also all over the place. I'm trying to structure them, but I just have so many thoughts <laughs> about like 
how much I don't like this book and how much I don't understand it. So this video can be a little bit all over the place. Do you understand the idea? Which one is it? Is it the mystery of this place? Is it the story of self-discovery? Or is it the story of learning to let go and learning to move on? I wouldn't know. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. Because when I look at the characters and what happens to them, none of it really fits. None of it actually is the story of Zachary. What did Zachary do? Zachary found a boyfriend. That's it. And on the same page, 466, she also writes, or maybe that's what I got out of it and someone else hearing the same story would see something different. So it basically goes along the lines that everybody sees something for him or herself in, in a story or in a piece of art, which it is true, but at the same time, I disagree with the idea that it's only up to the viewer or up to the reader to see the meaning in the book. I personally see like consuming of art or literature as a dialogue. I see it as a dialogue between the creator and the viewer. And the creator is the one who starts the dialogue for me. So it means that there has to be something that the creator wants to say, some idea that the he or she wants to share. And yes, there can be something else that the viewer will see. He should also be able to see the idea of the author, because otherwise it's not a dialogue, otherwise it's just a monologue between like you, yourself, your thoughts and your personal experiences. There will be nothing new that you would learn from this. It has to be a dialogue. And so it means that the author has to put certain idea in the in his work. That's why I really don't like these answers when somebody asks like, what's the meaning of your work or what's the meaning behind your book? And every and you know somebody answers like, oh, I feel like everybody will find their own meaning. Yes, they will, but is there a meaning for you? <laughs> is there a certain meaning that you have put into this work? So there is that. This is the idea, which is like, for me, is indissectable. I don't understand what what the book is about, what is, what is the thought that the author was trying to convey. Do you know how when you learn drawing, your art teacher would usually tell you first draw the big shape, like draw the main shape of your picture and deal with the details in the very, very last moment when you are done with the main picture. This book feels to me like she was so concerned with the details that she forgot the main picture. And that's why there is no main picture. There is this beautiful, fanciful writing, very imaginative and rich world. But those are just details which she was so fascinated with that she forgot the main idea, she forgot the main picture, plot, practically everything else. At least that's how it feels to me. Now let's continue with the plot and the story, the storytelling aspect of this book. The way the story was told really bothered me. Like I've already talked about it in my, in my previous videos because I started reading this book in December. It's August now. <laughs> I put it down, I don't remember when, but I put it down somewhere in the middle of this book. I just really was annoyed by the interchangeable chapters in this story. Now that I have finished this book, I guess I can see what she was trying to do, which again, I found in the explanation to this book, which is Cat's Secret Diary. So they, what I found in this explanation is page 448, if you want to check. So Cat is talking about her game and like, you know, the game that she was trying to create I didn't know what I wanted at all, so I kept thinking about what is it that I wanted and kept coming back to telling stories in game form. I got to thinking all of this might be a halfway decent game if it were a game. Part spy movie, part fairy tale, part choose your own adventure. Don't you think that it's like, you know, she's talking about her game, but it, to me it feels like the author is talking about this book. So that's why I say that, like, I feel like this whole cat's diary, because it 
doesn't really offend, affect the plot. He doesn't even find Zachary in the end. I feel like the whole purpose of this diary in the end of this book is to just explain herself, to just explain the story and what was her intention with it. Part spy movie, part fairy tale, part choose your own adventure. Epic branching story that doesn't stick to a single genre or one set path and turns into different stories, but it's all the same story. And then later on, on page 456, she also said, we had a cool conversation about overlapping narratives and how no single story is ever the whole story. So these two writings tell me that apparently it is supposed to be this like, you know, epic story with all of those elements and overlapping narratives. So I guess that's what she was trying to do with these interchangeable chapters and like to write a few stories at the same time, but all of and in the end like make all of them one story. So I guess this was the intent. For me, like it didn't work. Yeah, maybe idea, maybe the idea is interesting, but like the execution for me personally <laughs> didn't work. I was really annoyed by the fact that every second chapter in the beginning of this book was just a random, <laughs> completely unrelated fairy tale. Yes, it all makes sense in the end. It does. Like you discover that actually all of these stories are about all the people who are currently in the cave, which also, by the way, felt unfortunately like really unsatisfying. Also, keep in mind that you don't know that in the beginning of this book. I didn't know that. You understand that it's this, the book that Zachary is reading, the extract from Sweet Sorrows that Zachary is reading. But it was placed in the book in such like random places, absolutely unconnected to the main narrative that we were following. The previous chapter about Zachary would finish on some kind of cliffhanger. For example, Dorian being suspended from the ceiling and like practically dying. And then the next chapter would be a random fairy tale. <laughs> like it was so annoying to me. I would understand if the previous chapter would finish something like, and now Zachary sits in his room and opens the book and starts reading and then we read the fairy tale it would be logical for me that this is what Zachary is reading but it wasn't like that the previous chapter made a promise to me that something is about to happen and I will know what happens and then I turn the page and what I practically see is author's middle finger <laughs> like you know it's just like how I felt about it that she was showing her middle finger to me because the next chapter was a random fairy tale, completely unrelated. <laughs> it was totally random. So that really annoyed me. It annoyed me so much that in like in the middle, I just put the book down and I really didn't want to read it. And I left it for like half a year. <laughs> and so recently when I made the video, a few books that I really need to finish, which I will link if you want to watch, I mentioned this book because I saw that a lot of people really like it and I didn't want to give up on it. I didn't want to not like the book, which so many people love, without even having read the book completely. So without being able to form my opinion of the whole book. Now I have finished and honestly, it feels like it... <laughs> when I was reading, I was like, it's, it was such a waste of time, such a waste of money, to be honest. I am so sorry, but it's just how I feel. So the interchangeable chapters of this book, they have completely ruined like the whole experience of it. For me. I really didn't enjoy reading. Next thing that I would like to point out is that I feel like a lot of things in this book were actually redundant. We didn't need them. They they didn't affect the plot, they didn't affect the narrative, didn't affect the characters, they didn't affect anything. They <laughs> were not necessary. <laughs> For example, we have redundant characters, redundant dialogues, we have redundant tasks and events and scenes. So let's start with redundant characters, for example, like unnecessary useless characters, which I personally don't know what they were there for. Rhyme. Rhyme is this woman who was just like wandering around the cave. She was like, I guess she was writing down the stories. 
she was keeping the books but like why is she there for and like the one of the very last chapters is told like from her perspective why i honestly don't understand if you do please let me know in the comments because like i honestly what is what was she doing there why was she there next character is the keeper he is totally redundant like yes he is the time obvious like of course we figured it out in the end but he hasn't affected the plot he hasn't done a single thing he was just sitting in the middle in this heart room and writing letters to his girlfriend who was never there and he was just writing letters to her like that's literally what he was doing all the time oh well he talked to zachary a little bit that's it like he didn't really affect the plot he didn't do anything for the for the characters he hasn't done anything for anything he's just completely useless i feel like i don't know keep i feel like keeper was a completely useless character next one is the owl king everybody is talking about this owl king coming and then he came i don't even remember like who met him was it zachary or was it dorian i feel like dorian met him he was just like coming his way but like not nothing really happened <laughs> like nothing happened <laughs> why was he there why everybody was like the owl king is coming the owl king is coming nothing happened when the owl king came so honestly i don't know what was that for and then cat again cat she didn't really affect the her the, the plot like in any way i feel like the, the her diary in the end is the pure purpose of her diary is to explain the book to the reader because apparently the author just looked at her book and she understood that like there is no way for anybody <laughs> well, i don't know maybe for somebody but like there isn't there isn't really like way for many people to actually understand what this book is about and to understand the idea and to understand the thought behind it and so she just instead of improving her story she decided to write an explanation which came in the form of cat's secret diary that's how i felt you can disagree and let me know in the comments if you understand it differently because really cat she hasn't even found zachary <laughs> like she nothing happened she just found the door for herself which is also like her we will talk about characters later but like honestly no like i don't understand what she was doing there and why she was doing it next my favorite part which is like overly dramatical <laughs> overly dramatical but completely meaningless <laughs> completely meaningless like phrases conversations let's start with page 234 let's go let's do it together you can check also if you have similar edition 234 so this is the conversation where zachary talks to the keeper and he is like how long have you been here what are you doing here blah 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 and then the keeper asks zachary why are you here zachary <laughs> and then zachary starts thinking like because a book said i was supposed to be like next time a kettle talks to you and it will be called schizophrenia like book said that he is supposed to be here i'm like zachary you have a problem okay <laughs> next because i'm worried about going back because of crazy ladies in fur coat because i haven't figured out the puzzle yet even though i don't know what the puzzle is oh guess what the reader doesn't know as well <laughs> because i feel more alive down here than i did up there well because you were sitting in your room and doing like what just reading books that's why you didn't really feel alive if you went out and actually did something you would feel more alive even there but whatever zachary's answer is just chef's kiss chef's kiss i am here to sail the starless sea and breathe the haunted air that's what he chooses to answer <laughs> excuse me but he has never talked about like sailing the starless sea before <laughs> he has never like even mentioned i don't know does he love like to travel like like this answer makes no sense to me like i don't understand where did this come from <laughs> he has never expressed any interest in like sailing boats in 
traveling like anywhere like never in the book in all the pages before not a single time and then the sudden answer is i'm here to sail this like this makes no sense to me to be honest like i am so lost is it supposed to be sarcasm is it supposed to be a joke i don't get it i really don't get it <laughs> next one next one is page 346 I'm just giving you examples because there are more, but the examples. 346. This is the conversation of Zachary with Mirabel and like him coming to realize that Mirabel is the fate and he just he doesn't know how to ask her to clarify his idea. And so he asks her, like, what are you? And she for some reason she becomes furious. I don't know. Um, and she's like, I am a lot of things, Ezra. But I am not the reason you didn't open the door. Like, he, he didn't, he didn't, like, he didn't really ask her about doors. Like, and Zachary doesn't understand either. Zachary is like, what? And she's like, it's your own damn fault that you didn't open that door when you were however old. No one else's. Not mine not whomever painted over it either yours and like so she keeps on keeps on talking that like why he didn't open the door but like he didn't even like feel guilty for not opening it <laughs> and, again like in the previous like i haven't noticed him being guilty or like feeling bad for not opening the door he was just curious about like what's going on but like <laughs> I just don't, you see, I don't understand where these things are com come from. They are very dramatic. If you haven't noticed, they're so dramatic. But I personally, I see no sense behind them. Like, they feel so, and that's why they feel so pretentious to me, because I don't see them making any sense. That's why they feel pretentious. That's why they feel like Mishura. <laughs> Next example next example is 351 oh this is my favorite one <laughs> this is my favorite one it's just okay so dorian talking to what's her name eleanor dorian is talking to eleanor on her boat and he is like can i ask you a question do you know what the what eleanor answers eleanor answers you may but i might i might not have an answer or if I have an answer, it might not be the right one or a good one. Questions and answers don't always fit together like puzzle pieces. Like, <laughs> this is totally redundant. Like, this is so dramatic. This is so dramatic. But basically, what is she saying? She's saying, I might not be able to help you, which is, like, obvious. You don't really have to say it. Everybody, like understands that people don't always know the answers to it like it is so unnecessary <laughs> it is so redundant but it's so dramatic it is so freaking dramatic so yeah this is just a few examples of this very dramatic but totally like meaningless exchanges between characters so we talked about redundant characters redundant exchanges Let's talk about actions and events. Zachary was given, like, in the beginning, Zachary just wanders around the cave, right? And, like, he he just wanders, he's fascinated, he wants to know what the place is, everybody wants to know, nobody ever learns. And then he comes across this, like, secret passage where he finds dead people and books, and then he finds this, like, message in the old books that, like, find a man lost in time basically find Simon. You have been given everything. You have been given everything. Which is like, what he, what has he been given? Zachary doesn't know. Reader doesn't know. Nobody knows what Zachary has been given, but he has been given something. Apparently everything that he needs. And so we read on, we read on, and then explosion happens, and then Dorian falls under the ground and then we go to save Dorian again which is by the way how many times are we going to save Dorian in this book like he has saved him once now Dorian has fallen under the ground and is drowning in the sea of honey I feel like if she wanted to write 100 more pages Dorian would be eaten by a whale 
living in the sea of honey and then Zachary would be given some kind of scaphander by Eleanor and he would dive in the sea to save Dorian again maybe this time or by his own decision by his own accord because the previous two times it was Mirabelle who was pushing him to do everything it wasn't really the it, those weren't really Zachary's decisions so maybe the third time he would finally make his own decision <laughs> oh well we will never know because she didn't need those extra 100 pages so we only saved Dorian two times Mirabelle is like we are going to save Dorian again let's go Zachary we have a elevator and then Zachary gets lost in this like underground world and all of this like th during this all is happening I'm like but you are supposed to find Simon like go you know you were given a task like try to find Simon just like, like give it a shot you know like something okay he, he forgets about Simon for that for the time being because Dorian is dying and he has to save Dorian again Mirabelle says so and then when he's like all alone and lost what happens Simon finds himself <laughs> it's not that Dorian it's not that Zachary finds him Simon finds himself and <laughs> He just saves Zachary at the same time, you know, from these like dark forces that are like, you know, whispering into his ears. So yeah, Simon saves the day. They talk about like stories and like how everything is written and Simon is like, beware of what you're thinking because you're writing something again useless and like, you know, not really very much meaningful stuff. And then they part, which I was like, but you were supposed to find Simon, like, isn't there supposed isn't there uh, shouldn't be there something like happening after you like find Simon to like just let us know that everything is like you know he found Simon like something has to happen no no they just part like you know nothing happens <laughs> he was given a task why was he given it I don't know if you know let me know <laughs> apparently it's just you know he has to connect all the stories and Simon, he has to connect the Simon to the story, but like it makes no sense to me, why? why did he have to connect Simon to the story? Simon didn't want to be connected like everything in this book is just like why? <laughs> I have one big question why? <laughs> what? what is? why does he have to do it? so, okay, so okay, Simon finds himself again, completely unnecessary feels to me completely like unnecessary because nothing really happens it doesn't really affect anything in the book it doesn't affect anybody flawed nothing nothing happens except that like Mirabelle in, in the end was like thank you Zachary for finding Simon and I am like he didn't find Simon Simon found himself so whatever I didn't understand why did Zachary have to die in the end like what was the purpose of him dying what purpose did that serve exactly he was supposed to seal the story how they call it like the story has finished you are the key we have to seal the story again like why do you have to seal the story like it's the end but like later we read and again Mirabelle or somebody else mentions that like story is never over as long as it is, as long as it is told so Apparently, you don't need to seal the story if it's never over. It could be just, you know, being told. I am so lost. Can you tell? I am so lost with this book. I don't understand anything. If you do, let me know. Another useless action. Why did Zachary have to die? Also, he dies in a very strange manner. Like, Dorian meets him and, like, just what, kills him. <laughs> He's just like, oh, let's kill him. It's Zachary. Love of my life. Like, he doesn't, like, really even, like, check if it's a real person or if it's another vision. He's just, like, another vision, for sure. So, <laughs> that was strange to me. Next one. The moon and the keeper. The innkeeper. I also didn't really understand why were they there. Like, what was... What is the re relation between the moon and the fate? Because appar apparently the moon knew that Zachary is going to die and so she gave the heart to Dorian and she would and she was like gonna be fine just give him a new heart da -da. also another like you, meaningless exchange was between the moon and the Dorian when she when she's like 
follow what you believe and Dorian is like but I don't know what you what I believe and the moon is just like what did she do did she kiss him did she hug him she there was just a, an action that she did and apparently he understood and I was like I don't know. There were so many dramatic, useless actions that personally to me made no sense. So yeah, I feel like that's enough. Like you can tell that like a lot of useless actions, a lot of useless characters, a lot of useless exchanges of like actions, words that like I personally don't understand like why they are there, what was the purpose of it. I, I don't know. Does the author know herself? <laughs> because I, I feel like if she knew, there would be answers in the book. I haven't found any, so let me know. Now let's talk about the characters. I feel like there is not a single well-developed character in this book. Like, obviously, my personal opinion. Like, I, you can disagree. But it just feels to me that not a single interesting, fully well-developed character. I was indifferent to all of them. <laughs> I really didn't care for any single soul in this book. Let's start with Zachary, for example. He doesn't make his own decisions. He's so dependent on decisions of everybody. And not just everybody, everything. <laughs> like books, like pieces of paper. He literally does everything he's told to do, be, there, be those people or objects. Mirabel tells him to go save Dorian two times. It never occurred to him himself. Mirabel told him to do that. The book told him that he is supposed to be in this cave. So he believed it. And then pieces of random paper just told him go find Simon. And he's like, okay, I, go, I should find Simon. It's never his decision. Not a single, not a single time. It's always someone else's decision. And he just does it. He just does what he's told. Zachary, he's really not an interesting character. He's so dependent and he doesn't really learn to make his... Like, he, he doesn't really change. Like, he he's Zachary from the very beginning. He's Zachary, the same Zachary in the end. The only difference is that now he's, he has a boyfriend. That's it. That's, that's the difference between Zachary in the beginning and Zachary in the end. Zachary has got a boyfriend. That's it. <laughs> but of course, he is portrayed so dramatically in this book. He's portrayed this like lonesome person, reading books, liking being alone, like he's special, like he's unique. And this is like so... It feels very pretentious. And again, like I mentioned before, I have only learned that turns out he felt out of place this whole time while he was above the ground. Turns out he felt out of place and I only learned it in like the very end of the book because honestly, the story, while he is above the ground, doesn't really suggest that, that he feels out of place. Yes, you can see that he likes spending time alone. Yes, you can see that he likes staying in his room reading. He doesn't, he isn't really a fan of like meeting people and going out. But there are many reasons why people do that. People can stay home and read because they want to educate themselves. People might just like spending time by themselves. It's just their hobby. They like being alone. Maybe people tire them. Maybe they get tired of the social interactions. Maybe they're awkward in social interactions and they don't want to do it. It's just easier for them to stay at home and read. Like, there can be many reasons. It's not necessarily that he feels out of place. What I'm trying to say is the relationship that have been shown that he had in this above-ground world did never suggest that, like, he didn't fit in. We didn't see a lot of his friends. He doesn't have friends. Like, he only had, like, Cat. But Cat, for example, was always friendly to him. She was making a scarf for him. Then he went to this meeting that Cat invited him to. He also was kind of okay there. So people were nice to him. Like, there wasn't really anything to suggest that he was out of place. In the end, we learn because Zachary told so. Like, there wasn't really anything in the book to show it to me, to suggest it to me. Like, it had to be spelled out for me to understand it. The story itself never suggested it. Or at least I didn't see it, I didn't understand it. I, you know, there can be many reasons. 
but I felt like she had to literally spell out everything, explain herself all the time, I mean the author, instead of showing it in the story. That's what also like really bothered me. Why do you have to explain yourself? Why you don't just improve your story? Next character is Dorian. Dorian, we don't really know anything about him. We don't know really a lot. And because we don't practically know nothing about him, honestly, I didn't sympathize with him. I didn't care for him. I really wasn't emotionally invested in like him and like anybody in the book. But of course, Dorian is also described very fancifully and very dramatically and is a very special person because look at him. He speaks Mandarin, he speaks so many different languages and not just any languages, he speaks Mandarin and Urdu and many others. <laughs> like, you see how special he is. Dorian is very special, but like, you never know like, why he is so special? What makes him so special? What is the deal with Dorian? <laughs> like, he's just told to be this way, but he's like never really shown. It's always just telling how it is, never showing, actually showing in the book and in the story how it is. That like really bothered me. Next character is Mirabelle. She's not even a person. She doesn't change. Nothing happens to Mirabel. Mirabel is always Mirabel. She's this fate with pink hair. Like nothing really interesting about her. <laughs> Keeper, redundant. He really isn't needed in the story. He doesn't affect the story. Nothing. And also he's not really a person. Allegra, Allegra almost never is on the page. She's like a few times appears on pages and then she dies. <laughs> so like that's it with Allegra. We don't know also nothing about Legra and we don't really have enough time to get interested in her. So there is that. Now relationship. Zachary and Dorian relationship. Like, what was it? <laughs> like, honestly, there is no development. There is no relationship development in this book. It's they just kind of see each other. Honestly, I had no idea Dor that Dorian was gay until, until the moment he confesses love to Zachary. Till that very moment, honestly, I had no idea he was gay. Again, not shown. We know nothing about Dorian. So yeah, and then the relationship. What did they do together? Zachary saved Dorian's lives, Dorian lives with Mirabel, which is basically like he didn't do it on his own accord. Mirabel forced him to do it. Dorian saved Zachary's life. But like they, they didn't do anything together that would like make them connect. How do you know that it's like actual love that it's not just gratitude it's not just gratitude for a person saving your life it's actually how do you understand how, why is it love <laughs> how did they decide that this person is their destiny like there wasn't anything to show it what did they do together they just sat in one room once and read a book and then they found this closet which Dorian entered and Zachary followed because Zachary always follows and then they saw those doors and then there was this ball which was what was the purpose of the ball honestly like what was the purpose of them going into the closet and having the ball I feel like the only purpose was for Dorian to flirt with Zachary <laughs> and like you know telling him all the stories in like different formats like whispering and pieces of paper and wall signs like there wasn't really anything like th this that scene didn't really affect anything and then they go out and Dorian is like I love you Zachary I want you to know and I'm like Pff. excuse me <laughs> excuse me how how did that happen <laughs> how, when did that happen and then we okay yeah there was one more moment when Dorian was watching Zachary when Zachary was with his friends and that moment really reminded me you know which book do you know which book that moment reminded me of Twilight do you, because Dorian is like I can read everybody's everybody here except for Zachary Zachary is so mysterious <laughs> and doesn't it remind you Edward and Bella when Edward is like I can read everybody's mind but not your Bella you're so mysterious <laughs> so like 
it's like it's practically the same thing and apparently if you cannot read a person if a person is mysterious to you apparently that's the love of your life <laughs> that's what the book suggests if the person is mysterious you found the love of your life like i just don't it's so ridiculous <laughs> like it, it's so much bothers me <laughs> i don't know i just it's just so funny and it's like like no <laughs> just like no <laughs> i i just i just really don't accept it i i just don't buy this relationship i just don't buy it and also like you know there is no really relationship development between mirabel and keeper yes they're in love but like pfft, nothing really happens that's like they're of no interest no relationship practically in this book no relationship development just like ridiculousness <clears throat> at least that's how it felt to me now we are down to the rest of the questions which are like, like i have so many questions and I, I cannot put them in like one group i just have questions of like i guess of the imagery in this book of like all the images used there so for example why this cave had to be a library like there was no reason for this place to be a library why like the book literally deals with just three books sorrows something else fables so i forgot the name and eleanor and this Simon. so three books three books only have to do something with the story why was the place a library what what, what, what was it for like i just don't really get it i really don't understand is it just for the atmosphere is it just for the entourage so then it's just fancy packaging it's just mishra because there is no real purpose there is no real meaning behind that that's why to me it feels like fancy packaging of air of nothing mishra and then other symbol uh, other symbolism which is like also she also mentions in this book there is like symbols are not for definition symbols are for interpretation which is like really <laughs> are they <laughs> because symbols carry a meaning and the meaning has to be shared by a few people symbols are there to convey a meaning again they have to be defined the meaning has to be defined <laughs> otherwise it's just a picture otherwise it's just nothing it can mean something to you but you cannot expect everybody to read your thoughts and everybody to just like get you out of nowhere symbols yeah they kind of have to be defined or at least like because obviously different things in different cultures have different meanings so then if you are using symbols from a different from certain culture that like like indicate <laughs> which culture in particular you are referring to <laughs> And in this book there wasn't like really any indication of like what partic particular culture this is dealing with and that's like I personally I again I'm very bad with symbols I wouldn't get them I need to google them I need to search for them and then like if I don't have like any indications like where I have to look for is it Greek mythology is it, is it Egyptian mythology is it Bible is it is it jewish symbolism like there are so many different systems and like you never know because for example i was trying to find the meaning of bees i was like why bees <laughs> and so in some culture they are messengers like in egyptian culture i found ancient greece they are perceived as messengers but then when you think about it in this book they don't really have any message like bees don't really they don't they deliver food to Zachary and then they just they, they seal the story but the, they're not messengers and so there's so there are other meanings which I forgot but they also didn't feed and then I was like why honey why honey see and again I search and again I don't know why owls I have no idea why owl king why what owls are doing in the cave like i would understand bats being in the cave but like not owls i assume there is symbol but symbol of what couldn't find if you know let me know she does define so certain symbols like for example she defines in this book the symbol of 
cats she says that like cats are guardians what were they gar guarding like cat was always following zachary does it mean that the Zachary, Zachary was guarded? Zachary was killed in the end, so he wasn't apparently guarded very well. I know, just everything is so frustrating. I, I so don't get it. I so don't understand it. Like, if you understand any of this, please let me know. Please let me know. <laughs> That's it. So, I feel like I've talked enough. You can tell that I don't understand, like, anything. I didn't enjoy anything. Even though, yes, writing was beautiful, yes, the world was very imaginative, but because I didn't see the purpose of it, I didn't see what they were trying to convey, what was the, their purpose, they felt to me pretentious, they felt to me useless, they felt to me like just fancy packaging with nothing on the inside. And that's why I also I couldn't really enjoy them. So, there was my very long kind of rent review. It is kind of rent review, but rent review of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgerston. I really didn't want to offend anybody. I hope you understand that everything that I said in this video are just my personal opinions. I can be wrong. I totally could have missed something. I totally, it's possible that I have misunderstood something, didn't see, didn't pay enough attention. It can be also my fault that I didn't understand certain things. So I'm not trying to hate on your favorite book. I'm just also trying to see if I have actually missed something, if there are any explanations for all of those questions. And if you know answers to them, please do let me know in the comments. This video, the intent of this video, the purpose is to start a conversation, to start a discussion and to just see how other people felt about it. Because I see a lot of booktubers talking about this book and saying that they really enjoyed it. But at the same time, like, they don't really... S they they also struggle to explain what this book is about. Like, I feel like a lot of people also didn't get, like, the idea. Like, they also didn't get it. And, I don't know, but for me, I want to understand. I want to see what books are about. I don't, like, I don't need just beautiful, fancy language. I want the idea behind the book. That's why I read books. I don't need dramatic expressions. I want the actual idea. So I feel like I've said a lot and I've said enough. <laughs> Please leave a comment if you felt the same way. Let me know if you have the same feelings. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know if you know answers to any of those questions. Let me know how you felt. I would love to have a discussion and a conversation about this book. Uh, so yeah, even though I really didn't like it. And I'm so happy I have finally finished it. <laughs> and I have finally, I can finally start another book. <laughs> and I can just forget about it. Um, but yeah, let me know how you felt and what you think about it. So yeah, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a good day. I hope this video was interesting. I hope you will talk to me. And I will see you soon in the next videos. Thank you so much. Bye.